Okay. Let up. Okay. Come let up. Come gross. That's my girls. That's my girls. That's my girls. You girls come sit back in here. This is Letta, this is Kai. Letta. Letta is Kai's daughter. Kai is a daughter of the world famous Tora. Come up here, Kai. These are solid powerhouse females, these two. We're having a really good hike today. I came up without my snowshoes today because I felt it was cold enough last night that it froze hard and it did. And I wanted to check just how hard she's freezing at night because the sun melts it down in the daytime and then she freezes hard at night because it's clear now. And I can motor up here with no snowshoes on lots of my trails so I can cover ground pretty fast. And it's kind of nice. Now I'm hiking with Letta, and I'm pretty sure Letta's got a belly full of babies, so I'm hiking with the little pups in the belly of their mother right now. And so I'm doing work with them right now. They're, they're actually learning my commands and my energy and everything already. So that's how I do that. Now these are world-class dogs, these two. These are the oldest genetics known, and these are what everybody's striving for in the world is this kind of dog. This is the height of all elk on females is right here. This genetic, a very diverse genetic, very old world genetic, uh, real European. Uh, Kai is uh, just coming 10, I guess, and Letta probably about five. And just a, a really, really powerful set of females. Now, they're easy keeping females. They don't require much food. They're, an, they're, uh, they've got enough coastal blood and the easy, keep, easy keeper lineage that comes down from old Mia, uh, Tora's mother. It's the easy keeper line. They don't, uh, they don't take much to flesh out. And they were very highly prized by the old Norwegian guys and the old uh, boys along the coast and Sweden and Finland because they they don't take much food to keep and so they're called easy keepers they flesh out easy they don't eat much and uh, these dogs easily easily subside like subsist on uh, a pound a day so half a pound a day is lots of good quality raw food, half a pound morning, half a pound at night. Now Letta will start eating more, she already is, because she's feeding more, but Kai, she's maintenance ration and doing good. I don't know where she went. But uh, Letta is bred to the world famous Karoo. Now I want to tell you a little bit about preservation breeding because the concept with preservation breeding is you keep these old lines alive and you don't let them vanish and you do that by bringing in outcross lineages from various breeders that want to participate in keeping these old lines going and so 
you try to use coastal dogs and interior dogs. Now, coastal dog is an elk hound that's primarily been bred for generations toward the coast. They eat more fish. They're very, they're very thick coat. They flesh out easy. They're thicker, heavier. Um, they're what's called coastal dogs. The coat has has been used to more oil. It requires more oil in the diet, and so on. Then, if you go to an interior dog, like say Carew's an interior dog, he's generations inside the country, not close to the coast, so they fed more game, more moose, deer. They caught some fish, but the dog is built different. If you watch Carew move around, you can see the muscles on the outside so easy. His coat is a little tighter, a little not so bulky, and he's leaner, and uh, he requires more food. He burns a little hotter, and he... Uh, he does really good on meats, whereas Leda does really good on fish. Now, Leda's dad is Pretty Boy Leaf. He was a coastal dog, coastal bloodline. And so she gets that thick, heavy, heavy nature. But Kai's dad, you see, was Bram. He was an interior dog, lean, um, powerful dog, black, dark coat, tight coat, and uh, very good. So. We go all the way back, we can go way back to, to Mia. She was a coastal dog, and then Dakota was an inland dog, interior dog. And so you end up with those really good females out of Mia. No, sit down. Come over here, okay? So you end up with those really good females. And uh, I'll turn sideways so you guys can turn sideways. Yeah. And that, that Mia genetic was an extremely good match for Dakota. And that gave us all those heavy, big females like Tora. And uh, Tora, of course, we bred her to Bram. And that's how we got this. This is a beautiful European dog, like real European style, European size. Just, just so phenomenal. Dark, black, black mask. This is a, just a flawless dog keeps her condition, has tons of stamina, 10 years old, works like a charm yet. Uh, very, very good dog, healthy as can be, just just phenomenal. She had 34 pups, this dog right here, 34. Uh, her mother had 34 pups. The bloodline of this dog, if you trace back to females, goes back to old Varja over in Norway there, and old Varja had 44 pups, international hunting champion, uh, moose hunting, international champion, extremely good dog. I believe she was the first inter international champion female. Um, but uh, solid, genetic, uh, very fertile, prolific. And uh, Leda, she she's catches and recycles and rebreeds and does exceptionally well. Now, we bred Leda to Carew, which is the interior bloodline again. So now you get that really good combination. So all our best dogs are coming in the pups out of Leda here. And Leda will have pups that are five generations in our program, hundreds of generations old. They trace back to the very start of the association, these dogs. And the bloodlines in here, they trace back longer just on what we can trace, not, not counting all the thousands before, but they're traceable longer, older, than the entire existence of the German Shepherd breed, to give you an idea. Uh, these, this, this combination right here, this, this bloodline. So this is a very prized bloodline. Now you'll notice lead is a golden ring dog, like this is Kai carries the golden ring, lead it does. The golden ring elk hounds are, are highly prized because they never leave the handler. They're, they're with the handler. You can leave them. Like you, can, you can just live out in the mountains with these dogs. Don't jump up. And uh, they're a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal bloodline, this bloodline. And you can see how attentive these dogs are. They're just, they live to be with me, I'll tell you. They just live to be here. 
very, very good family dogs. This is the oldest known family breed of dog in the world, this, this here. Um, very, very good for families. Yeah, they love kids, they're very good with children, and so, so attentive to the handler. But this is their natural element out here. Now, I like to get them out here at this time of year, especially when lead is bred, and I'm pretty sure she caught, she's eaten like she caught. Then all the energy that her and I share here, then it comes into the pups, and this, this tone, this vibration, the pups are feeling it, and lead is obviously in very happy condition here, so she puts that good, happy feeling down to these pups, so as soon as they come out, literally, they're coming over to me. And they can feel the tone and hear it. So yeah, it's pretty profound. And all the trees are warming up. So the forest healing, the energy is so good up here. The sun's warm and uh, we're getting the vitamin D and the beta carotene through the eyes. It's just so good getting connected on the ground. It's just a wonderful time. But as a preservation breeder, I have to work hard to make sure I keep this old genetic alive. I've got old genetics in my yard and as a preservation breeder I keep moving forward with this genetic. Now I didn't bring her today. She was playing too much with uh, Cassa today. They were having a good time so I just left her but I have another daughter of Kai come up here. I have Leta's sister Rita but Rita is a Karoo daughter, Kai and Karoo daughter. So she's slightly different. She looks more like Kai, less like Leda. Now I had put Pretty Boy Leaf in with Rita, but I don't think she caught. She should have been showing belly by now. So not sure what happened there. But that's Rita's first, first uh, try at mating, so so be it, we'll give them another go. So I have another of these beautiful daughters and uh, just as gorgeous as these two, let me tell you. Uh, Rita is a little uh, little smaller and, and lighter than Leta and not as thick. And so Leaf, he packs in that big bulk uh, into this genetic. But Rita is very much like Kai's dad, Bram very much like Karoo, solid muscle, uh, powerhouse dog, very fast, um, moving all the time, like a high, little higher metabolic rate, and uh, um, she, she could actually eat more than both these two, like not combined, but she, she, ha she likes a little more food than Kai takes and a little more food than Leta takes, just because she's moving so fast all the time. But uh, if we get a litter out of Pretty Boy Leaf, you see he calms that back down again, brings that metabolic rate down, gets us that, that really, this, this stable, calm, really easy going uh, dog. Although I love Rita, she's just a dream dog. But uh, it's, this is a, an exceptional way to have this. Just keep alternating those genetics back and forth. Now the diversity of the genetics is extremely powerful in this, in this litter too, because this is a Karoo pup coming out, and that genetic has never been in Canada before, never been in North America. That's out of Finland, that northern hunt district of Finland there, Karelian district, way up north there, and so very very uh, diverse genetic, and of course Pretty Boy Leaf is a diverse genetic to Kai. Kai was, was extreme diversity because Bram was first generation out of Norway in Canada. And then Tora was very, very diverse as well because she carried that old Dakota blood. And that's one of the oldest known Norland bloodlines there is. Very, very, very profound bloodline. And so the genetic diversity in this set of dogs here and these pups coming is incredible. There's so many countries involved, and it's uh, very, very uh, good in terms of breeding. You want to try and breed the genetics as far apart as you possibly can, 
and almost every dog we used is almost like um, never seen each other ever. You know, it's it's pretty hard to do, but we managed to do it. Now I've got to start to really go through the planet and find me a new stud dog so that all these females that are coming now, so we'll probably go back to um, Sweden and get one, uh, maybe a pup out of Swix or something like that. I have, I have Leda's half sister, kind of. So Kai has a sister named Tika. Tika had a pup named Cedar. Cedar was bred to Swix, the fantastic bear male out of Sweden, Norwegian Alcon champion bear dog, and. We kept that cedar female back. She's two now, a little over two, maybe coming three, and uh, just about three. And we're going to potentially breed her right away to Karoo. So what that will do is let it will be carrying some Karoo babies and potentially uh, cedar as well. Wendy's going to get back to me if she wants to do the litter now or wait six months. But that's a Swix daughter with Tika, Kai's full sibling sister. We AI'd Tika and got those two daughters, Cedar and Aspen. And so that will be the first time that we combine the legendary Karoo with the Phenom Hunt Dog Swix. So incredible. And then of course all the other dogs I mentioned are in the background there. So pretty, pretty profound what we've got coming up. But I wanted to get these girls up for a stretch. I wanted to come and check out the conditions. I'm heading to the summit, hopefully, um, next Saturday. So I'm letting her crisp up because it's a, it's a long climb. It's 5,800. I'll have to work hard to get up there. I'm going to take some super stout dogs and head up. And it'll take me all day. It takes me five hours to get up there. But... If it's sunny and clear in the morning when I wake up, I'll strike out early and get there by 1 o'clock. It's quite a hike. It's a brutal hike. And I'll pack a big lunch, but uh, it's going to be some fantastic hike. And I got lots of dogs in good condition to make it, so I'll take five or six and go. Just all big dogs. And uh, we'll head up there. But I'm taking really, really good dogs just in, you know... Uh, the chances on the, them high elevations that you pull a knee or hurt your knee or something, you got to have really good dogs. So they might have to hang around for a night while I rest up if I do that. But usually I have good luck, so never worry. But uh, I'll charge my radio up and have everything. But yeah, we're looking for that. That's going to be way up. And we'll get some good footage up there. Might do one or two videos up there. Charge my camera up. So... Yeah, I wanted to put this out and let people know. I got people waiting on this litter already, and uh, they're getting some phenomenal dog. Yeah, best dog in the world, pretty much coming right now out of this dog. Oh, and I got some phenomenal pups in the yard. I'll do a video on them tonight, maybe tomorrow. Uh, they're just phenomenal. And Daisy, she's been hiking and going too. She goes on Wednesday. The two big boys, they just left. Oh. I got a story to tell you on that too. Michael came for them, but I'll do that on another video here. That was so fun. That was just awesome. But we'll wrap this baby up. We'll wrap this baby up.